Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banner. And in this hopefully short episode, I'm going to show you a little technique I just recently learned. Um, a while ago, I was building uh, six uh, coil steel gondolas for my CPT and C railroad. And I was kind of struggling with a way to make my coil steels look like coiled steel rather than just painted gray. And I couldn't come up with anything really, so I just painted them gray. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was, I was happy with that. You know, I still got to do paint the banding and stuff around them. And I was talking to a friend of mine, um, Jeff, who's building my layout. And uh, he says, you know, you know, Brian, I, I remember seeing a, an article or a video or something on how to make your coil steels look really good. And I was like, Jeff, just shut up. I don't need anybody to tell me how to build models. I'm Brian Banna. I can do this stuff myself. I don't need your help, thank you. Well, he ignored me and continued to tell me about it. And I was like, yeah, that, that sounds okay, but you know, I'm happy with the gray coiled steel. Well, last night he came over and he goes, let me show you, you know, what I was talking about. And I was like, okay, I'll humor him. I'll let him, you know, pretend he knows what he's talking about, stuff like that. And um, he asked if I had a graphite, any graphite and stuff. I said, yeah. And he go, I had this graphite pencil. So he went in and started coloring on it and stuff like that. And he's like, ah, yeah, that looks pretty good, Jeff. And you go, but, you know, I do have this stuff, too. This pigment, gunmetal pigment from uh, MIG. Well, to make a long story short, I let him finish coloring, and um, the night went on, and we just put it aside, and he went home. And um, I started thinking about it, looked at it, and going, you know, actually, that looks pretty good. <laughs> so so uh, I started doing that, and I finished a whole set, and I really like the way it looks. So, you know, no help to Jeff, more help to the weathering shop person, whoever whoever it is that, you know, showed everybody how to do that. And Jeff just happened to watch that and suggested it to me. So I won't give Jeff any credit, but I'll give the weathering shop guys credit. No, in all seriousness, I really appreciate Jeff bringing that to my attention because I, although I was happy with the gray that I made for these, um, it it was okay and I was just kind of going to go through with it. But after he showed me that and I did a set, um, it was really cool. And I kind of took what he suggested and showed me. And um, I I won't be using the, the pencil. Instead, I'll be using the uh, gunmetal pigment. And it works just as well. What I like about the pigment, pigment, and I'm trying to talk too fast again. What I like about the pigment is, you see these bands that go around here? And, and you'll see this up close. With the pigment, I can use the um, Q-tips, and I can get it right into the corners of the bands. Now, for painting the bands, I just use a, a Sharpie, and it turns out beautiful. So let me get the camera set up over here, and uh, let's do some coloring. All right, so this process is really easy. So I'm just going to do the, the large one, because the other ones are done all the same. Now, when doing this, um, I don't color the insides of the bands because once you put this um, pigment on there, it gives the bands a pretty good color. Uh, yeah, pretty good color. Even though on the outsides I paint them or I marker them black, um, the insides you really can't see, and the way that the uh, the pigment shines it up and all that stuff, um, it looks good. So I'm not worried about it. So it's as simple as this. So, as I said, Jeff was, um, where's the one he was, I was coloring on? See, Jeff was doing the, the marker or the pencil like this, you know, coloring it all in. That's a lot of work, so it takes a little bit longer to do that. With the pigment and the, uh, the gunmetal pigment here, just put it on the, on the tip of the, uh, the Q-tip, and I just color in first around the bands. Like that. Get the next one over here. Get the next one over. All 
All right, now we're just going to color the rest of the... Uh, now you'll notice, I'm sorry, we'll color the rest of the coil. You notice I have a paper towel under here because I don't want to get this pigment all over everything. And actually, what I should be wearing is a, a glove on my left hand here. But that's okay, I'll do that later when I do the rest of them. So you should be wearing a glove. Um, so that when you handle it, you're not going to get it all over your fingers and stuff like that. But for right now, it's okay. After I finish this one, I'll go get a glove that I use for, you know, those, um, like surgical gloves and stuff you use when you go do painting and stuff like that. So I think... I think this um, pigment is actually just ground up graphite because it sure looks like that. Okay, so we got all the, the coil painted. Now we have to do the ends. So we're just going to go in here and, well, not painted, but graphited. It gets slippery after you put this stuff on. Now these are uh, Walter's coils. They work out all right. So you're getting it all over the fingers and it's... You don't want to be handling any of your models after you do that. You want to go wash your hands after you do that. So do the other side. So you're seeing all this in real time, so you can see that it really doesn't take that long to do. I've got six gondolas worth to do, so there's two, there's two large coils and two small coils in each gondola. Now, I don't know the process the person who developed this or showed it for the first time uses, but what you're seeing is my the process I'm using. Maybe he does it the same way. Now I gotta get the insides. Now these coils have some um, steel balls in them to add weight to the gondolas. It's not a lot, but all together, uh, I could only get them in the two large coils. But together they give about a almost a quarter ounce. All right, so all the coils are painted. Now the next thing that I do, first of all, let me see if you can see a difference here in the two coils. All right, so the, the next thing I do is I take a, a dry paper towel and I start and I burnish it. So I just rub off any excess graphite or pigment. So you can, it'll, it'll shine it up a little bit, but you will not get any, you won't get any sparkly shine to it. You'll just get a nice dull, like steel looking shine to it. Where I scribbled on the, with the uh, graphite pencil, I don't know if you can see it there, but you can kind of see where I scribbled on it. <laughs> That'll go down, <laughs> so you won't see that. But I wanted to demonstrate to you what it looked like. So the, the gray color that I put on there actually turned out to be a good base for it, and that's just, uh, uh, a gray with a little bit of black mixed in. It's Tamiya flat paint. I forget what color gray it is. I think it's, I think I used uh, Tamiya royal light gray and then I added a few drops of, of black to it. But as you can see, I'm just 
polishing it all up. Get all the fuzzy pieces off there. Getting all any excess off so that you can handle these things without putting fingerprints on them and stuff. All right. So that basically takes care of it. So there you can see the polish coil here. Let me zoom in on that. Let me zoom in a little bit and then get these here. You can see this is a painted gray and this is painted gray with the, with the graphite on it. Sorry about that, I wanted to get more light down there. Now, what we need to do, let me zoom out, uh, is get the, let me move this out of the way. Don't need that right now. Now what we need to do is get the the um, bands black. So using a Sharpie, all I do is go over the top surface of them. So go right on the edge of the inside. There's one. See if you can make sure you can see this. And I just skim right across the top of the band. Alright, there's that. And the Sharpie dries pretty fast. Make sure I'm on camera here. There's the sides, and now I just need to do the ends. And there's a steel coil. So that coil is done. All right, so now I just have to do enough, you know, these. This will all make up this will all make up one gondola. So I've got six of these to do. I've, I've got one complete, so I'll have five more to do. Well, that takes care of showing you how I'm doing coil steels now. Um, before I say anything else, I want to say thank you again to the person. I don't know his name. I, I, Jeff might have told me, but I don't remember. Whoever it was that showed us or showed the modeling world how to, you know, make your coil steel coils or your, your coil, your steel coils, sorry, look more like steel, thank you very much for that. That's great. Um, for As a modeler, I don't ever want to take somebody's thunder away from them. I don't ever want to take, um, um, you know, take credit for somebody else's work. Um, I think the community, the people in the community who contribute to help us all be better modelers, it's fantastic. Um, I also want to thank my friend Jeff for suggesting this and and stuff. He's a he's a really great guy. Um, the whole group I hang with, you know, Jeff, Mike, Mark, um, and and the others, Sam, uh, Thomas, you know, everybody. They're all wonderful people um, to to know and to hang around with. So we give a lot. We give each other a lot of crap. It's a lot of fun. We give out as much as we get. And it just makes the community a lot more fun. Um, so anyway, I hope you got um, something out of that that you can use and um, make your coils look a lot better. Now you can go a little bit further with this kind of stuff and put chalk marks on them. You could um, add a little, you know, maybe some scratches with some rust 
marks on them. But as, as new coils, they probably wouldn't have rust all over them because they're probably still a little oily from being made or, or however they're made and stuff. I don't know. But anyways, however they're rolled and, and stuff. So anyways, but, you know, take it to the level you want. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's done and ready to be used for, for my purposes. So anyway, if you enjoyed this and... Um, um, and you made it to the end here. Hopefully this was a short video. I don't know until I go to edit it. Um, I really appreciate you watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.